Okay, 2013, axonometric question. I'm just going to show the setup in this video. Uh, I'll complete the question in a different one. Before I go into showing you how to do it, I just want to get across the idea of what's happening in this question. So, to put it in basic terms, you think of an axonometric question as being the corner of a room. The sketch I've done down here is to try and get that idea across. So if you could think of that sketch, the bottom section here is representing the floor and then the two sections here on the left and the right are representing the walls. So this is the dividing wall, so sorry, the dividing line between your walls and these are your dividing lines between your floor and your walls. If you were to take any of those segments and just separate them by themselves, so imagine taking this wall area and dragging it out, that's what it would look like. It would just be like an L shape. Same if you were to take out the wall on the left hand side, it would just look like an L shape looking at it flat. That's where you position your elevation and your end view with these questions and then you bring them together to draw a 3D graphic of whatever the object is in the corner of the room. So you bring the views together. So in the question here, they will give you the setup of axis that you have to draw. So in terms of where the corner of the room is, it's the X, Y and Z axis. They give an angle of 110 degrees between those. So you always start off an axonometric question by drawing a vertical line coming straight downwards and by picking a central point to base everything else off. Then you draw your angles that are given, 110 in this case, can be different in other questions, to get your x and your z axis. So I've prepped that in the sheet here already, but I'll just draw over heavy what I've just been talking about. So I have a vertical line. coming straight down. I marked off a center point to base everything else off. Then I got my protractor and I measured 110 degrees going out this way and 110 degrees going out that way. So that gave me my X and Z axis. So that's the first stage. And again, that angle will vary depending on the question. So just make sure, don't presume it's any particular angle, double check it. The next thing to do with this is to look for a clue for the size of this triangle that you have to draw. And they'll always give some sort of a clue as to what size they want it to be. In this case, what they told us was the distance between point A and point B is 7 metres. So you're going to split it down the middle 3.5 metres to the left, 3.5 metres to the right, and that will find point A and point B for you. So that was my next stage. I measured out, I put 35 in the center, measured out to the left to zero, measured out to the right to 70, and I marked off those two points. So that gave me that baseline. And that gave me point A, and it gave me point B. The other two sides of the triangle are quite easy to find. What you need to do is, you need to look out through the axis that's cutting through it. So for instance, for this line, the axis is coming in here, looking through it. And you're going to make a perpendicular angle to that axis to create this line. And you're going to draw it from point B. So I'm following that line coming through. And I'm creating a 90 degree angle against it. I'm going to corner B and I'm drawing my line. And you just continue that line up until it cuts your vertical axis. That's the second side of your triangle. The third side of your triangle will be gotten exactly the same way. So you're looking through this axis and you're going to go perpendicular to it and you're going to draw it from point A. Or you could just join the two points together. Both will give you the same result. So you triangulate that area like so. Next stage of the question is to set up the corners of your room as I was trying to explain in this sketch as their own drawings so elevations and end views and you can see them here on the right hand side and on the left hand side you can see this semicircular shape that they're based on and I'm going to show you how to do that now so what you do is you focus on the sides of your triangle that you've just created and you come out perpendicular to them so that's the triangle that I done here on the right hand side and I go to the top of it, and I go to the bottom of it, and I come out perpendicular, like so. So I drew those lines out, brought them out a set distance. Uh, it's up to yourself what distance that is, but just bring them out 
so they're not on top of the center of the drawing because everything's going to go back in there later on. So I drew an X1, Y1 line to start me off. That's parallel to the side of the triangle. My two ends are coming out, so I can mark them off. And now what you need to do is you need to find the halfway point between those two. So I've just bisected it to find the exact halfway point. On the halfway point, put your compass and draw a semicircle that arcs around between both points. When you have that semicircle drawn, what you're doing is you're going back to the center of your drawing, the very center point, and you're bringing it out through the axis it's looking through, like so. And you're looking for where does it cut that semicircle that I just drew. Where it cuts it, you join it back to either end and it creates a 90 degree angle. So that 90 degree angle is where I'm going to fit my end view into. You can see it here in the drawing. So that's the 90 degree angle. The setup on the left hand side is identical. So you're looking out through your axis, stretching the pen there. You're basing it off the side of this triangle. So I come out again a set distance, far out of the way. I drew an X1, Y1 line to base it off. Okay, so they're parallel to each other. The top end is coming out, the bottom end is coming out. That gives me two points to work with. I bisected the distance between them to get the midpoint. I drew in the semicircle from that. And then I brought the center point out, cuts the semicircle, and join it back to either end to get my 90 degree angle. And that 90 degree angle is again where I'm going to draw my elevation, as you can see here. So that's the setup of it. So all that's involved after that is drawing both views on the left and the right. And there's a little bit of work in that, but you get through it. Again, they'll give clues for heights that are missing, etc. And you can go tra through that in a different video. But once you have those done, you just bring them back down towards the center of the drawing and you're looking for where common points cross over each other and you get a 3D graphic in the middle.